The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Oshkosh Media, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hello, my name is Eric Kastner from Making It Happen. Beside me tonight, I have Karen Snyder from The Herald. Thank you for joining me, Karen. Thanks for having me, Ed. No problem. It's my honor because I've been I've been wanting to have you on for a while. So, um, you now, did you, are you from here, or did or, or did you grow up somewhere else? I actually consider Oshkosh my hometown. So okay. I moved here when I was in middle school. Okay. Went to middle school, high school, and. Graduated from Oshkosh West, okay. um, go Wildcats, Indians, uh, and started at UWO afterwards as well. What did you do before middle school? Like, where did you come from? Uh, Fond du Lac and Green Bay. Okay. So, so my family moved around a bit, and we finally settled here in Oshkosh. So. And how many siblings did you have? I have six siblings, three brothers and three sisters. Me too, me too. So I am the second oldest. So. So, so the first one is the princess, then it's me. So you know how that goes with, with yeah, older and younger and siblings. And birth order. And, and what was it like growing up in Oshkosh? I mean, how have you seen it change? Oshkosh has changed quite a bit. Now, I moved away when I was young. I moved to, out to Phoenix when I was 22. Um, so I wish I could be in Phoenix right now. <laughs> you know, it would be nice, <laughs> right? So I have adult children who actually live out in Phoenix yet. So okay. they were born and raised out there. Um, you know, But growing up as a kid, you, you know, we had the ice rings and, you know, the biggest memory, of course, is going out for recess at Webster Stanley with lake flies and sitting there with a hood over your head trying to dodge them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, had, I had fun going to school here. Yeah. Um, so a well, lot of fun. What were some of your more memorable school moments? I probably can't say those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I went to Oshkosh West and I had a core group of friends that, that we hung out with. And, you know, I was, I was always very, I was a good student. Um, so I wasn't one of those who ever missed, but uh, we had fun. You know, we, we, I grew up in a different time than what it is now. We didn't have cell phones and electronics, and we got together at you know, people's barns and hay fields and, and homes and, and hung out and had a good time. Did you guys have barn dan dances back then too? Like, you know, you know how people would get together on Saturdays and have the barn dances at somebody's farm? or We would get together at different farms and have music playing and stuff, yeah. Okay. It wasn't a hoedown or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, It wasn't out of a Hallmark movie, so. No. <laughs> no. But we had a good time. I had good friends. And in fact, one of my friends from high school flew out to Phoenix um, to drive back here with me when I decided to move back. So. Um, well, what's one piece of history that you remember growing up? I know this wasn't on my sheet, but I'm going to put you on the spot here. That's all right. But as, what's one piece of history that you remember growing up? Uh, you know, 1976, when the bicentennial was going and you had sawdust gate days going on and, and the parades, uh, I had a friend who had this big old pickup truck and we, would, we were sitting on the outside of it and we'd be down at sawdust days and we were watching the fireworks. It was just, it was a very, it was a great time to be a kid in Oshkosh. The one thing I, I noticed about sawdust days, now it's kind of gone away from the family atmosphere. It's, you know, I, I, and I kind of miss that. Well, I don't know. Um, I have a, a, my husband and I, we have, she's 13 now, and we go down there every year. Uh -huh. So it really is, I, in my personal opinion, it's what you make of it. Yeah. There's the rides down there. There's the music. If you're going to be around a bunch of people who are standing around drinking and stuff, well, that's the environment you chose to be. Yeah. But if you're walking the midway and you're doing the rides and standing in line for a pretzel and, and listening to music and stuff like that, I mean, it, it yeah. is really the environment you're choosing to be yeah. in. And we go every year and we enjoy it. Yeah. We go during the day, though, because we have a child with us. So well, what did you do for, uh well, where did you end up going to college and stuff? Well, I started at UWO, and I went to ASU. But in all honesty, I just finished my bachelor's about 18 months ago. I finished it online. So, From where? Charter University. It's an online school. So 
Um, you know, which is really interesting because, again, I grew up in a different time and I moved out to Phoenix when it was booming. And you could, I mean, I went out there and I got hired like that because I had, I was from the Midwest and people wanted that Midwest was work ethic. That's what I was going to say. Was it because of the work ethic? It was about, you know, but you can get a job because you're from the Midwest, but you have to keep it based on what you do. Um, you know, and I worked out at the Arizona Republic. I got a job out there in 1986. And in 2002, I was hired by Arizona State University. What was your main job at the Arizona Republic? Oh, my gosh. I started out in accounting, and then I went to classified advertising, taking phones, uh, phone calls, um, you know, people are calling to sell their car, their house, or whatever, and you're typing 100 words a minute to put it into the computer. And I went to inside sales and outside sales, and I was uh, co-op and new business development and key accounts handling. So you wore all kinds of hats out there, didn't all you? All kinds. I had to have at least 17 different business cards when I was with the Arizona wow. Republic. And I left there as their Scottsdale branch manager, which was their top revenue producing um, branch. Okay. I, went to, I went to Arizona State University to be the ad director for student media. Okay. So, and how long were you at, at ASU? I was there about 18 months. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, a great organization and one of the best jobs I've ever had where literally you're working with 200 students on a daily basis. Um, but I went to one of their conventions and it's student media and student media should be ran by students mm -hmm. not a professional uh, so I, I wrote up uh, you know an SOP and said this is really kind of where student media needs to go um, I gave my notice and they hired a student who um, came on board and they followed that for a while but that student is still in that role and I don't think he's a student anymore because uh, we're talking 15 years ago yeah but if it's a student organization, that's where they're supposed to be getting that experience. Yeah. Um, and I felt that having a professional doing that just did not make sense. So I left there and went to a small community newspaper in the Southwest Valley called the West Valley View, okay. uh, which is one of the products that we mirrored the Oshkosh Herald after. Mm -hmm. It is uh, now we're going back a ways, um, you know, about 15 years. But at that time, that newspaper delivered over about 75,000 copies every week to homes, and it was totally advertising supported, but it only covered the five suburbs of Southwest Valley. So Was that a local paper like the Herald? It is, correct. So it, it covered like Goodyear, Avondale, Tolleson, and Buckeye that are southwestern suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. And it had a full newsroom and, and ad staff. Um, and to be honest, it kicked the Arizona Republic's butt when it came to local news. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the, the products that I used when I took a look at what do I want the Oshkosh Herald to look like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I did that and I left there. It was my first and my, first, my very first uh, commission only job. Hmm. Um, I was a single mom with two kids, and I thought, wow, if I'm doing this, working commission only, I wonder what I could do for myself. Yeah. And I opened an insurance agency from scratch. So, did you ever dream? Did, did you ever dream of this being a uh, being a little girl growing up in Oshkosh? Did, did you Did you have any dreams like growing up, like to be a newspaper publisher? Yeah. Like, what were your dreams? I was going to be a writer. Writer. I was going to be a writer. So you always so. knew you were going to be a writer. But I'm not a writer. I'm not a journalist. Okay. That's not my background. Uh, mm -hmm. I work on the business side of it. Okay. I write a few stories, um, but I think I've only, I might have done two or three so far in our first year, but I did not end up in any writing field well, at all. What's the so. best story you've ever written for a paper? Uh, well, I personally like the one that we did for um, Water City Running okay. with Alex Hummel. Um, you know, it's a great group of people that, that meet at different locations every Thursday and they go out running and everyone's welcome, whether you're in a stroller, being pulled in a wagon, or you're a marathon runner. So, yeah. so you said you have two children mm -hmm. and are they supportive of your, of your dreams and your husband? 
Oh, my husband's very supportive. It, at the Oshkosh Herald would not exist without his support. Yeah. Um, and then my children, I have a 30-year-old son and 27-year-old daughter who live out in Phoenix. Okay. And they're, they're kind of impressed that, you know, old mom was able to pull this off. So, uh, what Now, what did, you know, because everything comes from a visionary. So what mm -hmm. kind of visionary or what, or what kind of vision did you see to overcome? Well, you know, I've worked in newspapers. I was at the, I was also at the Oshkosh Northwestern. Okay. Um, so I was the general manager and ad director of the Oshkosh Northwestern and Fond du Lac reporter for about three years after coming back from Phoenix. And you, you know, it, it's been years that you've seen this decline in local news. So even when I was still with the Northwestern, the thoughts of what would a, a weekly community newspaper look like here in Oshkosh, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I was removed from that position for a few years before this launched. And it wasn't time. Even though I was thinking about it back in 2015, it wasn't time. The timing was not right. When we launched last January, the time was right. And the catalyst for it was, um, you know, there's a little conflict going on in Oshkosh with Lakeshore Golf Course yeah. and Oshkosh Corp. And I don't care if you're for it or against it you know, or what your thoughts was, but what bothered me was on social media, there would be um, publications just putting out a headline. Now, the headline could be pro, it could be con, but the problem was that people tend to scan social media and then take it verbatim. Well, this is what I saw, this is how it is. Well, no, that's not the truth. You, you, you can't had believe everything on social media. Well, not that, but you need to click through. You need to click through that title and find out. And fact check it, right? Well, fact check it, but is it an opinion piece? Is it a letter to the editor? Titles should not be used that are letters to the editor. It should be designated that this is an opinion piece. Yes. But they weren't being designated as opinion pieces. So, in, I, I, it just felt like Oshkosh had this greater divide happening. And I'm like, Oshkosh needs to have a better handle of what's going on, and we need to be a more informed community, and a local newspaper helps create a more informed community. So did you feel Oshkosh was starving for, the, for a, local like a local community piece then? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, by the time we actually started planning this and rolling it out, uh, it only took about six months. Um, you know, if you ask the people that work with me, I tend to say this is what we're going to do and we're going to get it done, and then I'll figure out how to cross the T's and dot the I's later. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our launch date, which was January 11th, before I had hired an editor. And remember, I did say I'm not a journalist. Yeah. So we needed an editor to pull it all together. Yeah. But being a deadline-driven person, if I didn't have that drop-dead date, it would have just been pushed back and pushed back. So it was like this is when we're gonna, this is when we're gonna make this happen, and we did. Mm -hmm. So how many people do you have at the Herald for position-wise? Well, my team is great. I have Dan Rorty, who's the editor, and Julie Vandenberg, who's our customer service and office manager. Okay. And we have two people who work in advertising: um, Sam Kikaver and Andrea Toms. Okay. And then myself, uh, and then. Our content is driven by freelancers. So people like Tom Eckwall is a freelance writer for us. Uh, and he covers a lot of the city government meetings and so forth. We have Alex Wolf, who worked with me at the Northwestern in sports. And he is he, he fills the role as the sports editor. He compiles the prep sports roundup. He assigns the stories. I mean, I have a lot of really, really great talent that was displaced by different newsrooms that have come together to put together to, what to, a good product for to Oshkosh. To collaborate, yeah. Mm -hmm. What if a local resident wanted to submit something? Uh, just send it to submit at oshkoshherald.com. Okay. So. And that's the beauty of this product. I, I worked at the West Valley View, but then I also worked at the Fond du Lac Reporter, which has the Action Advertiser. Mm -hmm. Now, the Action Advertiser, is a lot of people down there, which I was surprised when I first came, because they felt it was their community newspaper. But it's over 95% submitted content. It's the service organizations and different businesses sending in um, 
you know, press releases. And that's what was being delivered to these doors free of charge along and then advertising supported. When actually the Fond du Lac Reporter is your community newspaper, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get your business news, your government news, your school news. But people didn't see the, you know, they didn't understand the difference because they're getting all this really great news in the action advertiser. Yeah. So when we created the model for the Oshkosh Herald, we said, okay, well, what should this look like? Well, I want it to be. We have some pictures of the Herald oh. here too that we want to that we want to put up. So that's the paper. So, okay. so you know the, the Oshkosh Herald premise, the vision of it is that fifty percent of it is going to be news. We're going to tell you what's going on in Oshkosh, and we cover the news. We don't editorialize it. We don't give opinions. We let we we cover the news and we give the stories, and then we have feature stories. Yeah. And then the other fifty percent is that submitted content. So that it lets people know the good things that are happening around the community. You know, um, the public library submits uh, to us on a regular basis. EAA submits on a regular basis. We let them know what's going on. And you know, as a as a new newspaper, um, we were audited by the, the CVC, which is the Circulation Verification Council, yeah. when we were six months old. That's really re remarkable too. That seventy four percent of households get it. And well, that's the amount that, say, they read it on a regular oh, basis. They read okay, read it on a regular basis. Uh, yep, and then 65% said they buy products and services from the ads that are in the Herald, are you which is an are outstanding you, are, number. Are you surprised by that and how, how quick it's taken off? Um, yes and no. I mean, it, it's coming to the door and it's filling the, the void of local news that people perceived was there or was there. So... Um, the fact that people are starting to talk about it and read it, uh, it, and I hear from our advertisers all the time, you know, so-and-so came in and they, they let me know the only reason they're here is because you're supporting the Herald by advertising in it. Uh, Mark and Susie's Piggly Wiggly, people refer to the Oshkosh Herald as the Piggly Wiggly paper, you know, and, and they've been great supporters. They've been with us since week one. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's advertisers and support like that, that without them, we may not still be here. Uh, we had companies, you know, Shea Electric ran a monthly um, ad giving the space to local nonprofits, but to support us. Uh, you know, we had advertisers like Hickey Roofing who paid a year in advance uh, because they liked the premise and the mission that we were on. Mm -hmm. So you have these local businesses that are supporting local businesses um, and, and local news and sharing you know, this is what's going on in our city. People should be aware of what's going on in our city. How hard was it to get the funding to start something like, like a huge project like this? This is personally financed. Okay. This is my retirement. <laughs> so, okay. um, you know, uh, we, we I, well, we, I can't say we, it was I. I greatly underestimated the amount of investment that it would take um, did you think to get it, this going. Did you think it would take more or less? I thought it would take less. I, I thought that the advertising revenue would build faster than it has. Um, but we'll get there. You know, there's, there's a difference because, um, you know, the, if you look, look in the Oshkosh Herald, it's all local advertising. It's all local businesses. And so I ask our readers to support them because that's what's going to keep the Herald coming. But uh, I guess one of the things I was smart enough to launch in January when a lot of budgets had already been set for the year. Um, but there's a lot of companies that have been told, you know, print is dead. And you have to, you have to show them there's a great ROI in print. And mm -hmm. there is. And I would say talk to our advertisers that are in there because they'll let you know there's a good ROI in print. But it's changing that mindset that has been taking place over the last couple years as well. What satisfaction does it give you as an individual? Like, boy, this, this is really, I didn't, I, you know. You know, it's very humbling. Um, you, my husband and I have, you know, the, the Oshkosh Herald. We, we own the Oshkosh Herald, but it's really owned by Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. And I cannot say enough good things about the people on my team that make this happen. Because without Dan or Julie or Sam or Andrea or, or Tom Eckfall, this product would not be rolling off the presses every week. Do you want to give them a thank you or a good shout out as long hey, as it yeah, I think I've already done that a few times. Yeah, so right? they are fantastic. Um, they're a fantastic team 
members. And you know, one of the things is we have to remember that as industries are changing and, and jobs are shifting. So there's a lot of editors from Gannett that are now in higher ed. You know, um, Peggy Brewster works at UWO. She was the editor of the Fond du Lac Reporter. Ed Berthoum um, just left the Appleton Post Crescent to go to Lawrence University. Um, there's one that works at UW Whitewater. So you have these great journalists that are going elsewhere using their skill set, mm -hmm. but you still need to you still need to let the community know what's going on. So, you know, whether they're displaced from different newsrooms or whatever, we've magically come together mm -hmm. to make sure that we're delivering local news to Oshkosh. And why did why did you call it the Herald? What was the yeah. well? This is a funny story too, Ed. Uh -huh. um, so I went on the website uh, for Wisconsin Newspapers Association and was looking at their members, um, and I was, you know, okay, well, this name's taken, that one's taken, this is too close, and so forth, and I did not see the Herald. So I thought, oh, Oshkosh Herald sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it took. I had already done my LLC, I had my logo, everything, before the first person said, well, you know, there's an Amro Herald. I'm like, uh, oh, really? I didn't see it on the WNA um, website, but it's owned by the Berlin Journal. Mm -hmm. So, but, I mean, the Herald really came about be of um, elimination of names of newspapers that were close proximity to Oshkosh. What are some other names that were flowing <laughs> there actually weren't any other ones. Okay. You know, it was really a process of elimination. Um, you know, there's there's Examiner, there, which Miles McGuire has now, the Oshkosh Examiner. Um, you know, there's News, there's there's Gazette, there's Herald. You know, uh, so when you were taking a look at them, it was kind of just crossing them off as they were within a, a certain mile distance radius, and it ended up with Herald because I did not see the Amro Herald. Okay. And why the color blue for the, you know, because media is attracted by colors and it, we, you it, know. It, really, the blue came because we're on the water. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's as simple as that. And maybe it's, because blue is a kind of common color, too, so. Mm -hmm. um, have you, what, what is your least favorite story that you covered? That I've covered? Yeah. I don't cover very many, no. so I really don't have a one I would say. Now, um, as the Herald itself, I think all the stories that we've been covering um, are important, mm -hmm. but I will say we had a very big learning lesson. I think it was our third issue where you um, culture came into play, mm -hmm. and we had published a photo um, and it based on language differences, it wasn't fully understood by the people that the photo was going to be in the newspaper, and culturally it affected them in a very negative manner. So if I could go out and take 26,000 newspapers back out, I would, mm -hmm. but we can't do that. But it was, it was a very, um, it was a good lesson in learning. We have to make, be very, much more culturally aware than we thought. But it was our third week out of the gate, and it was like, well, if it's going to happen, happen early so you're, you're not doing that as you go along. Yeah. So when your editors go out and cover a story, mm -hmm. what constitutes a good story? Like, you know, how do you, how do you know you're getting something good to cover? Well, that's a great question. So we cover the, Tom Eckball covers the, a lot of the committees that go on, you know, the planning um, committee, the Common Council, um, but we pitch stories. So people will pitch us stories. They'll call and say, kind of like they do at the news, you know, at the, at in TV, you know. Sure. Uh, you know, there's we've done a, a few um, with the golfer Johnny, something or other that was from Oshkosh, played in the golf um, courses here, and went on to be a, a PGA star. You know. It's, it has that Oshkosh connection, which yeah. is kind of, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, we ran the one um, on, I think it was the Panama Canal and the connection there. Uh, you know, so people pitch us stories or we hear about someone or something. Uh, and we'll, we'll, Dan will pitch it to one of our freelancers if they're interested in doing that story. Uh, you know, and that's the difference as well as with a freelancer, we can 
pitch them the story, but mm -hmm. we can't give them the direction on, on how to write it. So sometimes the stories come back with a different angle than we even thought of when we pitched it to them. So. What's the biggest story the Heroes covered so far? And it's, and it's year and three. Well, um, we have published uh, 55 issues because um, we're in volume two, issue three. Okay. And I would say the one that has generated the most feedback from the community um, was the original story that we ran um, on the Jones Park development that is going out in the town of Algoma. So we have followed that as it, it goes through all of the different committees for the, the what is it, Lake Vista Estates that's going out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's been an ongoing story as it, it, it's worked its way through. But I give credit to the developers because they're the ones who actually told us about the development. Otherwise you wouldn't know, right? We probably wouldn't have known about it as early as we did. Um, but it also gave the community a chance to give their thoughts and, and make them more aware of what was coming on too. So, you know, when you go to the town of Algoma meeting and they have, you know, 70 to 100 people attending a, a meeting that may, might normally have 25 there, it, it shows that the community is engaged and they're listening and they want to, they want to say in what's happening down the road from them. Um, in the, in the remaining minutes... Um, I have some more questions for you. Where okay. do you where do you see the hero going in like maybe five ten years? Well, our goal is to be delivered to every home and business in the Oshkosh area school district. So as our advertising support grows, we'll be able to expand that as well. Right now, our home delivery in the city of Oshkosh is a little over ninety percent, and it's at eighty two percent of the Oshkosh area school district. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll be delivering to all of those people before we were five years old. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit, little bit about your membership program too? Sure. We get asked all the time, you know, how can I support the Oshkosh Herald? We love you and you're delivered free. Um, you know, it is advertising supported, but we've been asked to do different features as well. People want different things. And so in order to be able to do that, you need resources. So we said, okay, well, if, if people want to support us, let's come up with a membership program. So our membership program is $50 a year or $5 a month, um, and, if, and that's if you're in our delivery area. If you're outside of our delivery area, we do subscriptions. It comes to you on a first-class mail, uh, and it's $70 a year, and with that subscription, you'll also receive the membership. But our members will receive exclusive emailed offers to them, um, from advertisers offering a, a deal or, or something that no other, it's not offered anywhere else. It's only through the Oshkosh Herald membership program. Um, and then one of the things people want, you, you know, they're interested in, in what we're doing um, and where we're going. And so we will hold an annual membership uh, meeting, like a shareholders meeting, next January, talking about what we've done this year and where we're going next year. But there are different things that this membership revenue will help us implement. And, you know, whether it's hiring another reporter, um, putting in features like Sudoku or Crossword Puzzle, because we get a lot of requests for those, um, being able to hire somebody. We only to have do, like a minute left or so. Okay. Uh, police and fire blogs and so forth. But we're looking at making the, the Oshkosh Herald a more well rounded product that and is giving people more of what they're looking for. Okay. And really quickly, one last question. What would you say to if somebody wanted to start a local business or start a paper? What would you say to somebody if somebody wanted to start something? Do your homework and go for it because, you know, life should not be lived with regrets. And my big thing is you cannot fail if you do not try. No, you, you have to try first, right? Yep. You got to give it your effort. So. Well, thank you for joining me, Karen. Thanks for having me, Ed. I appreciate it. It's been a great it. show, and it's been a. If you have a show idea, email email me at edwardcastroneyahoo.com. Thank you, Oshkosh.